Hey, welcome. Welcome to uh, this new episode, 120 episodes. Been doing this a while, and I'm over now here with ATC, All Things Comedy. And one of the starters, founders, owners of that company is my guest today. It's Bill Burr. Yes, Bill Burr, who chose a name. I, I don't think he, I, I mean, he got that name. He was born with that name. I was born with my name, because why would I pick my name? Uh, but Bill Burr, what a great name. He's like a burr. He sticks to your foot. You would like him. You take him with you everywhere. Uh, he's a little irritating, but then you realize a burr is a perfect thing. It's almost like a pine cone, but it's not. It's uh, a great metaphor. Why should I continue when I've got a brilliant person uh, who's going to be very relaxed? He told me he's going to be probably uh, in a lay-down position when we do this podcast because we're going to talk for a while. He's incredibly busy. He's uh, finishing up his last season of F is for Family on Netflix. It's the final and fifth season of a great, great show with a great, great cast. Um, he's on tour. Go to BillBurr.com. You can see his tour dates. It is, they're fantastic. He is um, uh, doing bigger and better venues. I don't know if they're better, but they're they're bigger. Um, and he's better. I just, I just adore the guy. He's one of the people that is fearless and uh, dare I say, uh, younger than me, and yet uh, motivates me to do what I do without uh, feeling bad about it and uh, not hurt anybody's feelings, but for fuck's sake, be able to be funny. He also has a show he he's very proud of. It's called Immoral Compass. And that show right now, right this minute, is on the Roku channel in the United States and the UK and Canada. So you want to watch this show. It's uh, shorts. It's all shorts. A guy named Tyler Falbo is incredibly talented, and that's who Bill credits with the making of this show, in addition to appearances by Vince Vaughn and Nick Schwartzen and uh, Marilyn Rice Cub and Bobby Lee and Al Madrigal. And, uh, I mean, so many people are in this damn thing, and Bill and Stephen Weber, and it's... Uh, just something I, I think you want to check out. Again, it's called Immoral Compass. Look it up. It's on Roku TV and uh, the Roku channel. And those are the credits of, of the Bill Burr. And uh, I don't give a shit. I love this guy. I love him. And uh, ever since we've been friends, um, he's tortured me and ripped me apart. And um, I need it. Because last night, I'm going to be honest with you, I was not at my best. I had a couple things upsetting me. They were uh, human being related, people in my life that I care about, and I let it get to me. And um, I, I just wasn't the best husband last night. I was upset. I was a little argumentative. And um, I, that's it, just being honest with you. So I'm going into this interview with Bill Burr right now knowing that he's going to rip my asshole apart figuratively, because um, I think I just I deserve it. I deserve it, and my therapist won't return my calls because he knows better now. Uh, I'm going to call him right after this episode because I know I'm going to need to because Bill is about to do things to me that I deserve. And so forgive me for my trespasses as I do say things that might be self-involved, might be about myself. Maybe I try to cut him off, do things I shouldn't do. Got to listen going to do a podcast, got to listen. And I do listen to him because I, I fucking love the guy. If you're 16, you can listen. If you're 12, don't listen. Uh, don't listen to this. This is, uh, I don't think you should listen. But if you're 16 and up, I think it's fine. Uh, that's what I got. You know where to find this thing. This is where all podcasts are available. You can rate, review, subscribe, follow, whatever you do. Uh, you know where it is. It's everywhere that exists that's meaningful, I guess. And, it's, of course, it's uh, through All Things Comedy. And it's also on my YouTube page, which is just a baby uh, growing. So it's uh, youtube.com slash Bob Saget. But you get to see a two-shot. Who doesn't want to see a Zoom two-shot? Um, I have a little confidence right now. It's about to be decimated. Uh, here is my, my friend. I, I'm sorry. I'm not name dropping. He says he's my friend. And then, of course, he takes it back. Um, I love this guy. A lot of you love this guy. And with good reason. Here is Bill Burr. Oh, yeah. That's.
That's how I want you in a hospital bed. Hello, Bobby. Hi, Billy Burr. How you doing? I'm going to darken myself so I look more like you, like I'm laying. Although your face is always lit. How is that? Do you light from inside? Oh, that's pretty. I get to see where you do it all. It's a window. Now, when you're when you're doing your Monday morning podcast, that when, have we started? It just is just there's no intro. You want to? Oh, I'm going to do an intro separate and say how great you are. I'll do all oh, that okay. shit. All right. But I'll, I mean, I'll start now, but we could have started already. What do you want? What are you comfortable with? Whatever you want to do, Bob. I just want like to know you know if, if if this is like we're playing with pads here. Is it going on? You know. Yeah, it's just, going on. I, okay. I, I'm recording it on. Three different dimensions. It's also in Viewmaster if people want to see 3D slides of you in Rome. I love the Viewmaster. Yeah, I do too. I miss it. I, I really do. I think we're going to go back to it when the world ends. Well, that was like Google Images, like back in the day when you wanted to see what stuff looked like. You had to get like the Grand Canyon reel. Right. Or the, uh, you know, the what, Greenfield USA. I can't remember what the hell it was. It was so. the beginning of the Giphy. You, I, I, you know, before, I, I don't know if you, of course you remember, you donated a huge sum of money when I torture you for this disease. If my sister hadn't died. Of I it. never paid that. I never got a bill. Oh, really? Right. Yeah. Well, you, you repaid more and more by doing so much charity work. for. I this. just kept bidding and then I won it. And then I was waiting for the bill. I don't know what happened. <laughs> the, the, what you were buying was to what? Make yourself a Giphy or make me a Giphy? What were you doing? Bob, I was trying to make you smile. <laughs> you know, and if I can do that once every six years, then I just feel like I have, you know, I, I you know, I'm complete as a person. You know what I like about this? It looks like you're in, like you're in hospice. That's what's great about this particular they'll see this well what's going on is i was gonna do it in another room but my wife needed the room so i got kicked out so here's the deal well what's she doing in there you know i don't you know what i don't i don't you know they just are you gonna be in here uh, if you're gonna be in here how long are you gonna be in here they just start talking and then you're like all right all right i'll go in the other, go in the see, other room this is the it thing it didn't even get to what she was doing i just know the second, are you going to be in here? Is that going to be a problem? No, it's fine. It's just, it means it's not going to be fine. So just, you go in there, you know, I'll just, you know, I'll go in the other room. Does she, how does she, how does uh, Nia feel when she hears you do this voice interpretation of her? Oh, she's funnier than I am. She just trashes me. She doesn't care. My my wife looks at me like I I am a personal assistant with an ego problem. So <laughs> <laughs> no, my wife is awesome, and uh, you know maybe uh, you know I don't know maybe I'm the problem. That's what I've realized. I've gotten to this age where you know I've done enough pointing my finger at other people, which is Fine. why Bob, I'm First, actually going to be I'm going to be that. nice to you. I, I want you. First time I want you to just be. You don't have to be nice to me. First thing, it's not your finger you're pointing, and the second thing is, <laughs> uh, I messed up with my wife last night, um, and my wife's very strong. But your wife could probably teach my wife a lesson in just tell him to shut the fuck up, or just, or just whatever. Because I am renegade sometimes. Because I have a comedians. That's the excuse. I'm a comedian, right? It's just I'm a douche sometimes, and I am the problem sometimes. So you you admit it. That's yeah, but you know something? They know what they're marrying. <clears throat> All right, how many? I, I don't think sad my clowns? I don't think mine knew. <laughs> Listen, there's not a, a father or a mother in the world as excited when their their daughter comes home and says, "I'm dating a comedian." <laughs> That is as far removed as I'm dating a doctor right. as you can find. They don't think she's going to be taken care of. They think you're going to be a jerk and all that stuff. And you know what? They're right. A lot of levels, they're right. 
To some degree, but in the other degree, we're more, I'm bendable. I admit when I'm wrong. The problem is I get very sad about how wrong I am. I get, do you get Oh, bummed? you asshole. <laughs> so even when you're wrong, she still has to cheer you up. No, no, Bob, no, 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 no. She doesn't cheer me hey, up. Hey, when you go on vacation, do you just fucking buy whatever you see standing around? Like, on, you know, you do a lot of fucking right near the cash register shopping. No, I, I've I go seen to a places. Grander collection of shit in my life that's behind you. Right, those they're... bobbleheads. Yeah, that's from a Dodger game that I kept walking into. The same one, uh, but the truth of it is, <laughs> <laughs> but the truth of it is, when we go on vacation, I just want to be alone with her, and uh, I don't go. She can go to the gift shop. That's you know, we go to a nice place. I don't go to like the mall. You stay at the mall when you go on vacation. We don't take vacations. I'm going to need one. What we like, do is, is my wife vacations where I'm working. Right. That's how it does. My I, wife's I do doing that with me soon in Denver. She's going to do it and a couple other places. I'm trying to get my wife. She always, you know, comes out to support me on the road when I'm going to Miami. Right. Or, you know, when I go to the Quad Cities, she'll see you'll be good. <laughs> you got this. You're, you're a strong person. So if you're doing like if you're doing three shows in the general same area, maybe you're based at the same nice, real she nice. She wants hotel. to go to Seattle. Yeah, it's fun there, and then yeah, Seattle's so, a fun one. Um, and then there's Portland, which is Seattle without the beauty. Right. With you with, know, and and with some with some uh, issues that all states are recovering from in cities, depending on what level of either woke or don't ever change us from the fifties. It's really, Oh yeah. No, Oregon, Oregon's a shit show. Yeah. That's, I was you just, either get a flat earther or, or there's some social justice warrior. Yeah, I wish they'd have a, I wish that state would have a fight to the death with each other. Well, that's what, we're, that's bill. That's where we are. We're, bill. That's we are at UFC level. That's what politics are. It's just, I know not, talk not, about on, this. not on social media. We're not at that level. Like right. I think a lot of, a lot of these these stupid dust ups, it's literally a thousand people thinking that the rest of the world cares that they're screaming about it, and nobody's, you know, you're watching because somebody's going to get in trouble, I guess. But um, you know, if you don't watch the news, you stay off social media. Look outside today, Bob. It's a beautiful day. Take off those giant glasses. Just go out there and no, these are breathe these in are, that smog. These are just my small glasses. This, these are I'm blind. Oh. You're not blind. What are you talking about, Buff? I can't see good when I. You can off. see a shit joke from a mile away. I get that. I can see. I can write a shit joke in Braille. Um, so now you're laying down. You have pants on. You're not. You're not doing anything weird, right? Uh, no. I, I never think off. of you sexually, which is the first dude I can say that about. <clears throat> well, then I guess I'm kind of insulted. Oh, sorry. Why, no, you, why, why can't you look at me that way, Bob? No, you turn me on. I'm kidding. No, you got a thing for gingers. I do. I yeah, do. and you're fighting it. That's what it is. I want to go to Dublin with you. Do you like going there? Uh, I like wherever I'm at once I get there. You don't like I, the tra traveling. My thing is getting through security and getting on the fucking plane. Once I get on the plane, I'm fine. Right. It's, it's the whole, you know, um, I don't know. You can see how capitalism works the way they board a plane. Yeah. The way they dangle all of these things. And, you know, you're in this group. And, oh, you have, you have status. And you're a little better than these other people. And then the lie that, oh, you're in group one. Oh, group one. I'm going to board first. No, nope. group one in name only. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you are group one because all these other groups were not calling groups. And they all can get on the fucking plane. Well, and we're going to act like we give a shit about all of these other people when we don't. We're just trying to create anxiety with the other people that don't get on the fucking plane. So then they jump through the hoops they want to line our pockets so we can get some more yachts and some coked up pores on them, you know, <laughs> and I sell my soul just so I can get on a little a little sooner than a wounded warrior mother with uh, jaundice. Right, and jaundice shows up 
unless you have the purple lighted plane, which doesn't exist anymore because they canceled the Virgin flights, which was all about purple lights, which hid jaundice. That was the reason for the purple lights. Virgin Airlines was a great airline, but it was the most cheesiest that aquarium lighting in there. Like we yeah. were all going to get, everyone's going to get laid. It's like, we're not, we're not. We're going to be sitting in these same uncomfortable chairs. Pulse music as you're getting on. When they board the handicap uh, first, it's uns, 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 uns. And you know, they're like, they're like in their chair, really excited. Was that the one that had the fucking 20 minute music video? Yeah. Oh God, that alone, dude, that alone. And it was a chauvinistic, if I can say that word anymore, unless that gets canceled. Uh, it was a chauvinistic uh, pre-video. Don't take our word and weaponize it back <laughs> against at us. What the fuck has happened? Since the last time I talked to you on here, uh, it, it, the, the entire world has fucking shifted into a battle of words where everyone said words matter. And now people are saying they're just words. Other people are saying they're just words. They don't matter. Can you stop it with the words? It, it, we are, there's nothing any fucking person can agree on, except that I have rectal dysmorphia, according to what you did for my benefit. Well, I'm sorry to be the one that brought that out to the public, but I just crushed me watching you carry that secret all these years. I had a producer spit out our water when you said it. <laughs> 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 you're bit of, you think you're bit what the fuck is it to be a comedian oh how did that do did that did that get a laugh at the benefit you got huge laughs rectal dysmorphia and then you came back and i i did the timing wrong but i put on a blue jacket because you said bob's wearing a blue blazer to cover his man boobs man tits or whatever and i put it on but i should have worn it for the outro of your video as well so i was stupid but i did do it but you would what you said after was even funnier about i mean you're just uh you're very good on the fly and you're not bad on the inseam all right bob listen this has been a fun podcast well thank you freeze Bill. you've you got just a lot freeze? coming up you've got this thing this 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 great thing it's it's a moral compass i'm really excited about it We're oh did you watch it uh no i've been I've oh been, bobby no, I tried. I tried, but I couldn't. But I'm not lying to you um, and telling you I did. But it's fucking impressive. And I know that you originally had it done for another company. And then Roku Channel bought it. And We had it done for Quibi. Tyler Falbo. Is yeah, the, he, uh, he, he, it's the guy, right? He, he did, but you wrote it, man. You, you wrote no, it. I didn't. No, I didn't. You didn't this even look at it. This is a bad press release. It says, Bill Burr wrote, directed, and starred in and executive produced the short form series this is your fucking dumbass publicist that said this, who I love. No, that that's that's a that's a <clears throat> that's that's not true. Yeah, right. There it is, right there. Huh? Oh yeah, Jesus, that's so legible. <laughs> um, do you, do you the, have to make a joke? Prosecution about, do you have to make rest. a joke about everything, Bill? I mean, really? I mean, I, uh, I'm trying to help you with this show. Can I promote the goddamn show? It premieres Friday, November fifth. In the year of our Lord 2021. Did anybody on the tell you you look like an old guy, Smiley? I don't know who Guy Smiley is. You know, oh, you're too old for Sesame Street. Jesus Christ. Um, and oh, most I people know. listening. Which one was are, Guy Smiley? He was the game show host. I, I'll take that. I he mean, was a good looking Muppet for Muppets. Yeah, he was soft and, and likable. He had a nice jaw. Um, yeah, Tyler Salvo. Tyler Falbo wrote, created, and directed these um, short, like, dark comedy, like, films. Right. It's the only way to describe it. It's called Immoral Compass. Um, we have some amazing, amazing actors in there. If you've never seen Vince Vaughn and Bobby Lee on screen at the same time, <laughs> you're, this is the buddy cop movie. Like, that, like they are, they are so incredible. Al Madrigal crushed it. Um, Nick Schwartz and there's just so many guys that we got in that that said yes that did so great and we sold it to Quibi and I was so excited for Tyler I'm like this guy is gonna blow up I can't wait to see what he's gonna do and then you know the pandemic came and you know took out Quibi they just you know and was I was it, like was Quibi the first thing that COVID went for 
Um, I think so, but I don't want to be on the wrong side of history. Right. I'm probably, you know, being a toxic cis white male right now by suggesting that that was the first one because Quibi was run by white males. That Oh God. Jeez, I don't God. know what this <laughs> I'm a, we're going to have to cut that out. That's so upsetting to hear. Um, but nobody's talking about it. nobody gives a fuck. I know. I was joking. All of that shit. No, Bill, that Bill, happened I was on the a, last a, one. Nothing happened. I'm agreeing with you. All, all of that screaming and yelling about the latest big dust up. Nothing happened. In the end, nothing happened. It it says it right here. Okay. Bill, this thing also has somebody that I've worked with twice who I love, Marilyn Rice Cub, who's awesome. She's one of the funniest people ever. She is also one of the. And she nicest. also has a book coming out. Yeah, she's she's strong. I had her on as a guest, but now I'm not. Did this, she do better my, than me? Nobody, nobody laying down is better than you. <laughs> but this is the second. You're my second guest on all things comedy, which apparently means I, you're not my boss, are you? No, it's a co-op. It's a co-op, so it's like. Yeah. We share a condo during the no, summer? No, it means we, that we have to approve your guests if you're going to have somebody on your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. They said, you're not getting Bill, are you? That you? I mean, what kind of company is this? We're honest. You know, we're, we're yeah. transparent. I like People that. really don't like me over there. That's not true. Uh, most people do like you until they don't know you. You were talking about airplanes before, and that bit that you were leading toward that you didn't do because you're smart, you don't like to repeat yourself on every single thing you do. But when you talk about how you used to sit at the back of the plane, the only thing between you and the shitter, or I don't know what word you use, is a piece of plywood. I've never heard the word plywood used better <laughs> in my life because that's what it was. It was particle board. Oh, oh my, yeah. Yeah, there's... Uh... That was the DC nine and you'd open your window and the engine would be there. So you couldn't look out. And then on the other side would be, there was literally somebody taking a shit on, on like this. It's like car. Yeah. It was like plywood. It was like this thick. You could hear them undo their belt. That was the joke. And you were just yeah. sitting there like, and it motivated you. I need to sell more tickets. So if I can just get to the emergency exit row, which is the poor man's first class. Like nobody is living a better life than somebody gets the, uh, the emergency exit row. Right. You're crushing it. You paid for a coach seat. You got that extra. I shouldn't say this because those fucking assholes will make up. I bet it's more money already. I don't. I, there, there's extra leg room, maybe, but you can't lay back. It doesn't recline because you got to save people, and that's who you want to save you—the guy at the back. I was just thinking of, of like they they should start doing like all like different airlines for different body types. That's you know what I mean. Yeah. So, and you then would... everybody, everybody can feel comfortable. Yeah. Right. You could get like, you know, 700 skinny people that are trying to live forever. That's on four seats, plane. four seats on each side, four seats on each side, you know, <laughs> no food. Right. And then the other ones you get those, those, uh, those giant, those cargo planes. You just forklift them on. <laughs> <laughs> and you just drop them off. You just open the pot. No, you, you, and you just, you, you, off, you fly them to and from, you know, like those cities that win like the fattest city in America. Like those are their, those are their hubs. What, what, wait, wait, what, what city would that be? That'd be the state fair, eat all the you hot know dogs. Houston, Texas won it two years in a row. And every time I go there, I bring it up saying how like it's so hard to win that two years in a row because it really is like how do you know who is the fattest city so what they have to do is they gotta like you know make a city feel bad and then other people can laugh like ah, oh, your city i don't think they can do it anymore it's probably like body shaming but i do remember houston texas went back to back because they do everything big down there bobby I don't they think would, Houston's going to recoil on that. I think they would stick by it. I, Texas is not up to being told what to believe. Are you the really joke in a I did on stage? You're drinking was, water like you're in a hospital bed, Bill. 
Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. How am I supposed to drink? Am I supposed to chug it down like Mean Joe Green in that Coca-Cola commercial that you auditioned for and didn't get? God, your mind's a labyrinth. It's so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I want to, I, I let, uh, I'll just keep talking about this for one more second because I, I just uh, adore you in a non-physical you did uh, exec produce this with an old friend of mine, John Irwin, and, um, and yes. Madrigal, who is incredibly talented. Madrigal. And, and, is that what I said? You said Madrigal. And how do you say it? Madrigal. So it's the same. No, you, you put a J in there. Madrigal. Oh, no, I was a slur. That was just dumb. It's Madrigal. I think you need to apologize to him. For that I slur. so bad. I want to apologize to a lot of people, especially all the people that you fat shamed that you're putting in a cargo plane and just dropping them in Houston. Hey, you ever think that maybe it's it's negative motivation? Do you know how many fatties have written into me and said they lost a ton of weight because I made them laugh at themselves? It's maybe not all the, bad. By the way, laughing burns calories. It actually does. The flab it does. moves. I said Plus, next... I'm, Bob, I'm a bald orange man. I mean, you know, Look. I lost. I Making lost. fun of yourself, disarming, you know, it's a trick. We all know it. Saying, I'm going to make fun of myself, hey, Bob, my penis, you use, my... You don't talk about your dick very much, by the way. Bob, do you use jest for almost men? <laughs> I am I am a man. I am, I am a man. When you are done... Uh, playing some basketball or doing one of your crazy athletic things that you love. Do you not shower with the other guys purposely? I haven't done anything athletic in years other than try to avoid you at a comedy club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause that means we see each other once every five years. <laughs> no, I grew up in that generation, like in gym class. It's just like, oh, I remember the, the girls locker room had like individual showers and ours just had like, there was like three, giant ones yeah. and it was just like you know like eight people to, to them we just yeah they just threw you in there like animals they just always treated us like animals um so but i will say though you know like when i go to like take to steam or whatever like i'm not the guy walking around with his dick out and when the guy has his dick out to me it is fucking like you know it's like what a mad 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 world it's just the funniest shit ever to me it is, and I find like, like older people and uh, uh, Asians. Asians are like like they're, they're, like their culture. Did you the say spa, you're you saying Asians are more apt to be nude in in the? It's been my experience that like they're well. I didn't we steal the spa from them. I don't know if we stole it. I mean, we stole the spa. We stole yoga. We I stole think, martial arts. I, I believe Joe Rogan started most of it. <laughs> and the ice bu the ice bucket challenge except you sit in it not dump it i don't know look you said asian you know what i love about those ice baths is like if you actually go fuck 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 that's cold that as a man that means you're a pussy it's yeah. like why can't i get into ice cold water and state the obvious that this is uncomfortable agreed and your manhood is judged by how little you cry out like and also just the level of what it takes to be a man now like if you get into an ice bath without crying out you're somehow now William Wallace getting his innards pull out <laughs> while yelling freedom <laughs> it's like you're getting in that to bring down the inflammation from your fucking workout I've um, always loved it I, I have always loved especially on vacation if I go away and I get in a steam or in a sauna to then just walk in there Step by step, I don't jump in because uh, it's not really where to jump. But it's I like to get in quietly. It's quiet. You just you just I don't even grip my teeth. I just do it. It's not a big deal, really. I don't think you slip in like a predator, like a like a crocodile. <laughs> Everything I do is like a predator. In fact, when you were talking about those showers <laughs> in school that were um, that are wider, and the girls had separate showers, the great thing about today. That the, all the, the boys uh, in high school have all uh, more room, just three giant like little studios as you were. It gives more room for cameras. So you can get like six cameras in there, you know, to videotape the whole thing. You know what I mean. 
when you do that, when you're right. producing one, one of your uh, films, you know, mm-hmm. for, for uh, Immoral Compass, which is mostly full of, it's mostly high school kids being videotaped without their knowledge. You know, Bob, there is a time and a place for your predatory humor. I don't have um, pre- that. My predatory humor is unfortunately something that got me in trouble years ago because I was basically saying it because it was so upsetting to me that predators exist. Um, and I was making fun of Why would you revisit them. that? You're going to edit all of this out. No, I'm not. Hey. Um, you want me to? Let's, let's, can we talk about your credenza? It's a. It's not really a credenza. It's, what it's, is it? It's a, is, it a, is it a chest of drawers? I don't know. Maybe it is a credenza. It's a bookcase that's kind of modern that I had built to use behind my desk, which is designed to match it. It's kind of nice. Oh, yeah. What third world country did they take the wood from? Pride from those crying children's fingers. So pr- big celebrity Bob Saget could have a place to put his L.A. Dodger bobbleheads. This was made in America, this thing. Oh. In from men's those, eyes. Those slaves at Ikea? No, this is not particle board, like the thing in the bathroom. <laughs> so wait, so this this podcast that comes out Monday, your Monday morning podcast, you've had the same picture for 25 years, I think. 20 years. Oh, yeah. And it's yep. smart. I just changed my branding. I turned my I face. I want to change it. Every time I see it, I go, I got to change that thing. People are like, yeah. We just never do it. I don't know if it makes sense to do it because it's kind of a classic thing and you're kind of one of the number one podcasts that exists. So why change something that, why change? Because I think it's not about the photo. I think it's about the content. That's, That's what I think. Bob. That's correct. That's why right. you didn't don't have a shaved head in it, which you could do optically anyway. You could just simply airbrush your hair out with a younger picture of you. <laughs> Oh, there's a, that's an idea. <laughs> now, I think you, that picture on my podcast was the last day I was even remotely attractive. And then once I, I shaved the head, it was just like, whew. Bill, you started hanging around me. Be honest with me. Well, when I hung <laughs> around you, you became much more grotesque. But I, I believe that you are a good looking. I believe I can fly. That guy, that is a guy that is, deserves to be where he is right now, from my it's knowledge. The top of the charts, baby. Yep. All I'm of in, his albums going. And I get in trouble. Again. I get in trouble for going. I believe that you're five. I get in trouble for that. Well, I haven't heard about it. But he's a predator. Apparently. Well, I hope so. He went to jail for it. I hope he did it. <laughs> <laughs> where you're you're on tour right now i think you're like out right when this thing comes out which is monday uh yeah you're you're really hitting hard uh which i'm excited to see your new new stuff because you're one of my favorite comedians that i'm talking to right now almost a compliment no, I, you are one of my favorite comedians. I think you're one of the funniest people alive because you take risks and you actually have a reason for them. And I, I find that structurally uh, impressive. Okay. Sound no, like you're I'm talking s- about a building. Yeah, but I was complimenting you. I, was, oh, I uh, thought you were describing your house structurally impressive well apparently it's not because i have a credenza in my office which is usually in a dining room i think i thought a credenza was always in a man's office you know (laughs) i never heard that (laughs) i never heard a designer say that i don't think anyone's ever thought that (laughs) i'm gonna be honest with you i don't know what a credenza is other than it's a long piece of furniture with drawers yeah, I think you're right. And this is not, it has a couple drawers. They're kind of Is like, it Italian or is that a Latin word? Credenza. A, I believe it would be Italian, I think. But it's the root. And why is, is it Latin. a credenza? I think so, yeah. And I think it means a place where you keep human body parts. Did Chrysler have a line of cars called the credenza? 
this is what I want to cut out. I'm going to leave in all the pedophile references, but the, the elaboration on the credenza. The Chrysler credenza. Let me ask, let me ask you something real. Um, when you first found out about credenzas, how old were you? <laughs> I was in my 20s. <laughs> were a you friend in- of mine was <laughs> moving up in sales and he had a credenza. <laughs> I remember he, he did. I remember he didn't want to get it. <laughs> and the woman he was dating talked him into buying all of this furniture that he didn't want to buy. Was he Italian? And I asked him where he got it. He screamed out the slogan of the furniture store, which was. He sc- I go, where'd you get this? He goes, I loved it at Levitt's. <laughs> <laughs> And I fell out of the fucking chair that he didn't want to own, just dying laughing. <laughs> he was so fucking, he was just young. You know, when you're young as a man, you're just so amazed that some woman wants to date you, that you have the tendency to just do whatever the fuck they say so they'll stay with you. And that's what he was doing. And he had this whole fuck, and he had a credenza. And that was the first, and, and the, the, his relationship was going south. He knew it was over. <laughs> And he was just walking around the room, like talking about his furniture in, in <laughs> anger. And I was, you know, one of the great pieces of comedy I ever saw. He said, I go, I go, where did I set down my water? He goes over there on the credenza. <laughs> and he was just doing, <laughs> where'd you get this? I loved it at Levitz. <laughs> <laughs> Levitz was uh, an Eastern seaboard company, correct? Yeah, Levitz was, uh, yeah. In, something in, I can't even remember the slogan because he yelled it. I was something about you're gonna love it. Love it at Levitt. We love it. Love it at Levitt's. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Love it at Levitt's. And then we had the uh, <laughs> Light and Leisure, the purple building. It was the guy just sold lamps, and he did. They all were ripping off Crazy Eddie. Right. Going like I'm out of my mind. Why did I get all of these fucking lamps? In Philadelphia, all we had was Big Marty. Really does sell carpet cheaper. From one of the biggest showrooms, and, and why would I know? Why would I know this? I miss all of that shit. Yeah, we don't have that. That's become local AM radio ads, pretty much, or one eight hundred cars for kids, which runs, which is I shouldn't have said because people yell at you when you just mention it. Why? Because they're so he- sick of hearing that song, and it's upsetting to see those kids all dressed up and everything. I think they're the problem. Wait, cars for kids? I never even thought about it. It was just such yeah. a catchy jingle. One eight hundred. Don't cars do it. For kids. I'm telling you, people are going to be writing all over comments. They hate. Why can't that. these kids? Why can't these kids have cars? That's the better song. That's better. Wait, what? What? What do they do with those cars? Are they toy cars? You know, I don't even know what it is. I think it's something that helps kids. I'm not sure, and I'm not looking it up. But I, I don't think we want to know about it because the song is. Horrific. It, to me, it's like a Chucky movie when I hear that song. I like that song, and it reminds me of some of your original music. <laughs> now you're a drummer. <laughs> do you write music? Do you do you have you sung? I don't. I never heard you sing. I know you can. Sing. I just sang one eight hundred cars for kids. No, no, I'm ki- I'm I'm serious. I, I, Jerking no. off is what Saget did. Sorry, I'm just riffing here. Just no, you're a lyricist for sure. You're definitely a lyricist. Um, but we should get together and jam things into your Now ass. there, there is the, the album nobody is waiting for. <laughs> I don't know. Any people are buying everything you do. You're doing arenas in 2022. Did you hear about that? Did you just compare my work as a comedian to the two of us fucking jamming in your garage? Is your garage finished? You got like a man cave in there? No, it's we just can- a garage. Where you can go, cars, you can cars. go in there and be alone and cry. No, I don't. What use room do it. you like, Bob? When you cry, what room do you go to in your house? It doesn't really matter. I pretty much weep all day long. <laughs> Is that why you have carpet to absorb yeah. your tears? Exactly. <laughs> I do wouldn't not want cry. the wife to slip on your tears. I don't cry on hardwood um, or on uh, tile. Does your wife come home and catch you, Bob? Have you been crying? In the hardwood area again. <laughs> to be honest with you, after I'm after the way I was last night, upset about something, uh, 
crying would have been a good thing for me to do. In apology, do you ever oh. cry? Do you ever cry what with happened? your wife when you when you are um, possibly saying something mean? Do you ever cry? I'm not Italian. Italians can do that over their credenza. Over I maybe said a, that because I love you. <laughs> they can. I can't. I'm, I'm Irish. Like the tears. It's uh, you know, someone has to die for me to cry. What well, at your hands? Huh? At my you, hands? No. <laughs> what did I do? Have you right? Why? Why did I kill him? He was my brother. Um, no, if somebody hurts animals, children, or a friend of mine dies, I will cry. Do you get upset when you watch the news and in an emotional way, or is it pretty much like a lot of us, which is anger, and then we just give up and don't watch it? I don't know. I, I don't. I get depressed, and then I I I. Uh, There's just shit that people do to other people, like yeah, yeah. you know, like. The sex trafficking, kidnapping, taking somebody's kid and put them in into that world. That there's people that actually do that. Yeah. And there's barely any press on that. But you know, if you tell the wrong joke in a fucking strip mall, it becomes a three day media storm. It's just the priorities of that type of stuff is which just becomes overwhelmingly fucking depressing. And uh, it makes me actually, you know, I, that's why I don't believe in a God that cares, you know, it are just you, doesn't, it doesn't you, make sense. And, and he doesn't take any responsibility that he also put those monsters on this planet. And then there's also like, you know, and then he blames you for how you navigate these fucking horrible people that are down. It doesn't make any fucking sense whatsoever. No, it doesn't, but you're making God a, he, but you're using it as the uh, well. The metaphor. joke in my act is because God doesn't take responsibility for his actions. I now believe she's a woman. So that's <laughs> that's helpful. <laughs> that helps the conversation. <laughs> it's a joke. Oh, oh, you're why are you yelling at me? I'm trying to dog paddle. Because I loved past. it in Levitz. <laughs> I've, I'm apologizing for things I've thought I've said from 30 years ago. Dude, you're in your head right now. Get off social media. No one cares, Bob. They want you to go out there and say the craziest fucking shit you can possibly say. And I say. have been. I have Everybody been. wants to pick a side of the fence, Bob. I am. I'm picking both sides. I'm, I'm fucking having well, fun. Dear, if I even think about something when I'm eating my fucking cereal, I apologize for Bob, just get out there and say what you want. I am. That's exactly what I'm doing. You people pleasing, four eyed cunt. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait a minute. I'm saying you're not. You're not understanding. I have. That's a, a great chair. That yeah, really it's a, means... it's a dentist chair, and I, I was going to say that's it, what it looks like. Yeah, I use it for anal uh, entry uh, for when you come over. But the question, I like you haven't seen this chair. Um, the question is, I never saw you. I didn't know you could lean, but you can do like a back bend in that fucking chair. Yeah, I could. I, I, exercise, I do my abs. The question I have is, um, in fact, if you were standing in front of me, this is a reason to see this on YouTube. If you were just in front of me, it would be the best. If you were endowed at all, if you didn't have just like a little Listen, ginger Bob, bush, if you didn't have, like don't, a, don't th try to make fun of me in my manhood because of your own fucking desires that don't. God does not approve of. I am simply God's saying homophobic too, right? Is that also I'm supposed to believe that? He uh, makes not, serial killers and doesn't like gay people. Is this like what I'm supposed to be praying to Bob? Correct. I agree with you. I agree with you, and I'm sorry that you used to talk the way you talked. <laughs> I don't know. What you mean. I don't. Did you go to church? Yeah. And were you a choir I was like boy? Cal Ripken Jr. I had a fucking streak. I don't think I missed a mass in like fucking 20-something years. Were you a choir boy? No, I was an altar boy. Oh. And no, I did not get molested. Oh, come on. Tell me the truth. This is a podcast. I didn't. Bill, I need a sound bite for my asset for the podcast, please. Uh, listen, it, it just it never happened. You know, I, I did all the right things to make it happen. 
and it didn't happen. And then what? right when I least expected it, it happened. Thank you. That's what I wanted. Print. Print that. We'll no, not a, at the church. Not at the church. At the parking lot? Right the, outside of Levitt's. <laughs> you love it at Levitt's. Uh, whether I wanted to or not, you're going to love it at Levitt's. <laughs> <laughs> So you said something that I really uh, loved on Seth Meyers, um, which was you just don't care anymore. You know, you were just like I, you were getting into the whole vaccine of it all and just, you know, all of it, all the shit that we've been told is malarkey, all the crap that we've been told is uh, you, you've just kind of given up because emotionally it's it's ripping all of our guts out to deal with it all day long so you still stand by that that was like a month ago well yeah if you why are you going to stand there and argue with somebody that does doesn't share your opinion and then it's just like well, i'm not going to change your opinion this right. is a waste of time so you know yeah you know fuck it you don't if you don't i'm I, i'm not going to waste my time caring if you don't care that's yeah. it all right. We're not being graded on a curve here. We are as smart as the dumbest people out there. The dumbest people out there are going to listen to what, you know, if you're dumb, you listen to what you want to hear. Is basically it, I, I think, you know, but I'm not saying that people on the other side don't do the same thing, you right. know, so I, I don't know. Listen, who the fuck knows? Nobody knows the long term effects of the vaccine. Nobody knows the long term effects of what COVID is. All right. I'm going to dance with what brung me, which is I'm going with the doctors, because if I didn't go with the doctors, I would have died of a ruptured appendix in fucking the 80s. So they have kept me alive so far. I'm sticking with them. However, if you don't want to do that, you know, it's like being in L.A. You know, you choose between the Clippers or the Lakers. Well, that's not two teams hard. for you. That's not right, it was a, probably a bad example. Uh, you're in you're in New York. You choose yeah. between the Knicks or the Nets. Well, that's not a good example either. All right, you know you're in uh, Boston. You're in Texas. Boston. We only we only have one team. Exactly. For well, that's all we need. We that's don't need, all you fuck, need. We don't need to double down in all of them. We fucking win all the titles. Because you love it at Levitt's. Because I loved it at Levitt's. Levitt's. What? <laughs> so have people got? Everybody's saying people have gotten dumber. I just think that they've always been this level of IQ. I just think it's there's just more access to hearing everybody. No, the internet is a uh, you get these think tanks of stupid people. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's think tanks of smart people, but I'm not in those. It's odd that they call them a think tank. You know, it's a thoughtless tank or it's a uninformed tank. Yeah, but there's always there's always been like that type of shit. It's just you know before. Yeah. You didn't have to listen to it. So now you have to listen to it. And it's just like, you know, dumb people. What was hey, going on? Bill, what happened to your thing there? You wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Remind me. You turned off your camera. I hear you. No, no, no. I just got a phone call. Um, Do you have to take it? Is it important? Could it be about? No. Could it be Bob. about the premiere that happened November fifth of of your fabulous immoral compass? You got to see it, man. Tyler Falbo is a fucking genius. And uh, you, you like, dude, this is one of the best things I've been a part of. Thanks for asking me to be part of it, by the way. I see like 25 actors and actresses. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I got to be honest, Bob, your name never came up. Oh, well, I, that's cool then. I'm cool with that. Never even thought about you. Right. Well, that's kind of what I like about it because we don't have a... a a showbiz relationship. We actually uh, have a, uh, I guess I'd call it a friendship. I don't know how you view I it. I would say divorced gay couple energy <laughs> is what we have. <laughs> so we still you can talk. See there's, we, well, there's, you can see there's a love there, but there's too much water under the bridge. Right. You know? If we I had mean, a on, kid, if we'd up. had a kid, if we'd adopted kids or twins... I think we'd be we would have talked a lot more over the years. Well, that was a mistake, okay? And you know, I should have said yes, but I just didn't feel you were going to make a good father. 
I'm but sorry. That, you know that's not true, correct? No. <laughs> <laughs> Leading the witness. Let's do let's do the odd couple. We'll play against type. I'll you want to go on? You want to do Broadway? Can... I would totally do that. I saw you on Broadway. You were great. Ah, oh, Bill. I love that play. That was Hand to God, wasn't it? I don't remember the name of it. I always it was the one with the puppet that went had the devil in him, and I played a priest. I played a Lutheran minister. Yeah, and you came out on stage, and everybody went nuts. Because they didn't at yeah. first, they didn't know it was me because I had a collar on and I was I didn't have the jokes. I was there to service this great play with these great actors. Bob, you didn't service the play. You were there for yourself. Okay, I serviced. Myself. I remember afterwards we went out to that. We went out for a steak dinner. Yep. Yep. And you just talked on and on and on about how <laughs> amazing you were. <laughs> no, you didn't. You were no, very humble. That's impossible. That's impossible because I would go, all I would do after a performance is I know how to fix it. I can't wait to get back tomorrow. What the fuck did I do tonight? I'm sorry you saw that one. How many did you do? I did like 75 or 80 of them. There was an actor named Mark Kudish that had to go do something else. So I was lucky enough to get in there and uh, be with these other five amazing actors. The play. How many shows a week? Uh, it was eight or nine so it's Tuesday through Sunday, your dark Monday, right? Yeah. Once in a while, Woo. we did Mondays. And then once in a while, we would do a show for charity. Or, you know, you would do a show for... Um, I did an off-Broadway play called Privilege, and we did a show for the hearing impaired. And Was that, was that play about your, your career? Privilege? No. It was about a guy <laughs> who's kind of an Ivan Bosky character that I played, and he lies, and his money gets frozen, and he his life is ruined. Who's Ivan Bosky? He was a guy that did a lot of insider trading back in the day. And maybe killed his wife? No murder, no murder. But it was kind of a Ma Bernie Madoff kind of guy. Uh, so what was interesting about it is um, they had an all-deaf audience, which was lovely, and so it was an extra show that week, but they took the script and transcribed it into the teleprompter, you know, the closed caption reading. They didn't have a signer, but they had it all written below. But I don't really, I wasn't off book. I changed some of the dialogue, so they were laughing at me. I thought they were laughing because the jokes were good, but they were laughing because what I was saying didn't match what was written. <laughs> oh, Basically. wow. Yeah, it was it was interesting. I I was I thought I had the best show, and then I found out they're laughing in all the different wrong places. What's going on? And then one of the cast members told me, and, and it was a bit embarrassing. But it was a gr great play. Paul White uh, wrote it. Oh yeah. So did you? Out of insecurity, did you throw your five working senses in their faces? No, I actually walked out to see them all. And I gave them some money and then touched them around parts of their body. I mean, you are in New York City. Yeah. And, and if it's you, nice if, to know that part of New York City hasn't died yet. No, you can still touch strangers. And if you have lost your hearing <laughs> or your sight, to touch them is to actually help them. It's not sexual. It lies. Well, I mean, because their other senses are turned up more. Yeah. Yeah. Everything yeah. else. That's why so the horror of what you were doing was way more vivid. So you gave him a second show. You're such a giver, Bob. I think. And you said the horror or the whore because you have that accent. I said the whore. Oh, the horror of what I was doing. The horror. Oh, the Sorry, horror. The horror. <laughs> the horror. You could play a musical version of Apocalypse Now and be Kurtz. So you could play Marlon Brando's part because you got. You're already, uh, your hair is ready. You, you, you think about, you put your hands in your head. You think about, you rub your face like that. Uh, it's because I don't like looking at you for too long. You know? Well, we're going to watch this because I know how things go. We're going to take just one break now. Now that I'm at All Things Comedy, it's just one break. And it's probably therapy of shaving your balls, a product that does both. It's a ball shaving uh, therapy. Extravaganza. It is. It's everything. Mm -hmm. And a company that you founded. And here's the break. All right, the break's over. Ed, how much water I, do you drink a day? Probably not enough. Does the criticism ever end with you? <laughs>
I think this is the first time I've talked to you where I'm trying to like jump ahead of you ripping me apart. I don't know why, but you you seem incapacitated, so I don't know why I'm taking shots. What is what? What do you have around your neck? Uh, the headphones, because I I don't oh, like to that wear that. Yeah, I want to be able to hear you without the feedback. Oh. I usually wear a feed bag around my neck. So, Bill, you shot a special. Do you talk about it or you don't want to talk about it? I shot myself doing stand-up. We'll see if it turns into a special or not. I'm sorry to keep you up. Um, are, are you tired a lot? I got a lot of shit going on and I don't want to do it anymore. That's not true because you love it. This is the final <laughs> season of F is for Family. Um, yeah. And that's kind of cool. That's really exciting. Five seasons is not a small thing on Netflix. And yeah, well, that, well, that's because of the great Mike Price and uh, from The Simpsons, you know, the co creator and the captain of the ship over there. So uh, we had a great run and I'm really proud. I think this is our best season coming out. So we're ending on a high note and uh, we didn't overstay our welcome. So, uh, yeah, that's like a very melancholy thing when something like that ends. Yeah. You know, you've had a lot of things end in your career, so I know you can relate. So. Absolutely. Yeah, it's been very painful, almost wanting me not to live. <laughs> but but with you, you 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 conceived this show, correct? Um I had the idea for like vignettes and stuff, and then Peter Billingsley, Vince Vaughn, everybody at Wild West. Um brought on Mike Price, and then we fleshed it out from there. So, sorry I'm yawning, dude. I just, you know, my kids get me up, I stay up late, and then they get me up. Early. It's not because I find you excruciatingly boring. It's just, I'm, you know. No apologies. Are needed you know what? Except- no, you know what? You know what? I had one of those things where it was just nobody was paying attention to something, and then they were like, you know what? We do like that thing. Can you rewrite the whole fucking thing and have it done in five days? It was one of those deals where you're just sitting there going like, why did I ever get into this business? <laughs> you did have yeah. that happen, right? You had to do the whole rewrite, you're saying? Yep, and chop off like, you know, a third of it. Right. But too long. The- it's going to cost too much money. For people that can now go and watch all four years of it and then watch four seasons and then watch the fifth, would you tell the people that are however they're looking at this or hearing it, or telestrating at the cast because you have like literally from the beginning one of the best casts on an animated thing. Yeah, we have uh, anything. Yeah, Justin Long, Laura Dern, Sam Rockwell, David Keckner. Uh, I'm gonna Debbie Derryberry, uh, Haley Reinhardt. You know what sucks is it's been so long since I've because of this pandemic. I I so miss those um those table reads and um right. You know, we just it was just I used to just love watching the actors cracking up at some of the lines that, you know, the late great uh um David Richardson and Mark Wilmore was always, you know, we had two guys die during this whole pandemic, man. It sucks. So, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, it stinks. It stinks. So, but we had a great run. We did have a great run and I'm proud of the show. So um, it's a great show. When you first told me about it, I watched it and I, I really it's a really great show. Congrats on a five year run. Thank you. Now you're you never gonna... said congratulations when it got picked up. So I think it's sort of some shy for it from you that you're excited that it's over. No, I'm just congratulating you. picking that up. No, you're, you're right. No, you're right. I'm just congratulating you that it's ending, not that it began. <laughs> I don't celebrate when someone sells something and finally gets to do their dream. So now you're going to, now the tour that you have, is it going to be stuff that uh, you've been working on for since you shot your last thing? Is it is it going to be, is it two hours of stuff you're rolling around? I don't know what it is. I just go out and you know, I don't know, Bob. I need a vacation. That's what I realized. I got to fucking shut my brain off. I, agree I really with you. do. 
I agree. I do. So I got to learn how to do that because I don't know how to do that because I'm German Irish and it's just once you go and you go and you go and then you can't go no more. That's it. You die. That accent makes me feel real good about my ancestors. Oh, yeah. Are yeah. your ancestors German? No, they kind of were in a different place at that time. They were kind of running to try to stay alive. The Kenyan? No. The, the, you from the, Marathon Runners? No. I meant just running because my close World War II uh, was a difficult time for them. Oh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the South Pacific? I heard that was horrible. No, that was Korea. That was the war. It was a conflict. Did you take your this? Your, your ancestors were in politics? Do, do you, have you revised history before everything had to change? <laughs> By the way, is history changing? Are these school books actually changing like people are claiming that it's being rewritten? Is that really Rob, you got to stop watching the news. You have not brought up one good thing that's going on in the world. You're right. You have not said one. I mean, to sit there. But, but Bill, you, an elder you, statesman you, like yourself in front right. of your credenza that you got at Levitz, <laughs> at John Lovitz's. I want to know why. Like, why? I why? Feel I, I'm worried news about the junkies fascinate me. That they just keep filling your head up with all of the awful shit that's going on out there. Right. Right. And I try to distract from it by watching shows where you're trying to find out who hacked up who. That's what calms you down is people murdering people. Squid Game. Did you watch that thing? No. Right. So you're trying to let in positive stuff. So in your stand-up, you can let out all of I your I watch data. sports and I watch old TV and old movies. You're smart. Back to a simpler time, Bob, before civil rights. <laughs> See, this is the problem. Because you, yeah. See, I it's get... basically, I'm going back as a white person going back to a simpler time when, you know, so many other people who don't look like me had it way worse. But in my head, it's, it's a simpler time because they don't touch on those issues. Um, I was talking to somebody how like, you know, <laughs> all the racism, homophobia, sexism, and all that shit, you know, that's been talked about in Hollywood. There's all of these other stereotypes that are in that there's other things in there that they just do not talk about. Like, um, I was watching this old episode of uh, The Untouchables with Robert Stack, right. and there was a prejudice. If you were really tall, if you were like a giant, you they thought you were a moron. <laughs> and I don't know if it was the Of Mice and Men. It is. Club, it's Lenny. Any, yeah, everybody was Lenny. So I was watching this Untouchables, and there was this big guy, and they're always like sweethearts, sort of childlike, is how they <laughs> write these giants. And he was the strong man for this this um, this Don, this mafia Don. And the guy gets shot, and throughout the episode, he's slowly dying. And like the 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 big childlike guy can't handle it. And when the guy finally dies, this giant of a man is walking around this warehouse, basically beating up a warehouse. He's almost superhuman strength, <laughs> and and he just kept yelling, "Who's gonna tell me what to do? Who's gonna tell me what to do?" <laughs> So, was he was he killed at the end? Because that would be the tragedy. I believe he was. I'm binge watching it, so I've just been tearing through it. Um, but it's a uh, yeah, it's really you know, it's really like I don't know. So, Bill, I agree with you. I am allowing negative in, and that's a mistake. So I got to shield myself because I happen to be a very sensitive person. You know, and I make jokes that are sometimes horrific, as you, of course, do. Everyone knows your jokes are horrific, but you're making a point with them. You know, you're you're trying to, you know, you're calling out shit, and that's well. I think a lot of times people don't even they don't even understand that you know humor is also used because you actually care about something. That's and that's you, my and, whole argument, and, and you don't want to you don't want to feel the feeling, so it's a way of pushing it away. So you're not percent. joking about it because you don't care. You're joking about it because it hurts you to think about it. I've been preaching this, what you just said, it, what you're saying is brilliant and it's accurate and people don't under, even understand. Gallows sarcasm, humor. Gallows, Gallows humor, humor. 
how I dealt with all the deaths, how we deal with death, how you deal with a war, how you deal with things that's too soon. Well, not if you're in so much pain, you have to say it. You know, that's where too soon comes from. It's too soon if you're doing it because you don't care and you're an idiot. You know, you're just saying something to be rude. Yeah, yeah. There's this. It's like you know, it's it's like anything, but it, but it's not a it's not a blanket statement. You know. Well, that's like, what I think. Too, that's too soon I, if you lack the ability to, to find the release. You're, you're searching for it. You don't find it. You actually add to the pain. But if you find the release, you, you actually help people. But that is the uh, one of the, the thrills of watching somebody trying to do that because yeah. it could just blow up in their face. And then when it doesn't work and the comedian brings more pain to people, comedians are in the back wall dying laughing. Not because right. they want to see people um, have more pain. They're laughing at the pain that the person on stage is now going through, watching them try to dig their way out of it. Because and, it, yeah, uh, you, but, you know what I yep. mean? Go ahead. But we need people who don't even do stand up to talk about that and tell us what it is. That's well, there are. There are people that are motivational. They're like all that. over the place, Bob. I know the Gary V's of the world that are telling you the positive. They're trying to tell you to let in the positive and bring back things like love and kindness. And that's not something that I think you would go out and preach, even though that's what you're made of. And you would go out and make fun of love and kindness. And one of your voices, Oh, he's got to be kinder. And then that would be hilarious. Cause I know that you believe that people should be nicer. I just people... like that you brought up somebody's name. I don't even know who that guy is. Right. He's a motivational guy and he's very popular and he actually is doing good for people. Good he's for all... him. Exactly. Yeah. But then there's a lot out of people that are preaching. Playing the conference rooms of some of the best hotels out there. <laughs> I wonder how you work up as a motivational speaker. You probably start off at like motels, standing in the parking lot. And going, you hey, your... man. It's all about the RF mic. You got to make sure you got the headset, the Tony Robbins headset. Yeah. You got to have that thing going on. And then you got to do the whole, uh, you know, just cheering them up like, hey, man, you know, God doesn't want you to have that rusted out car. You know, <laughs> <laughs> do you, you I find that people don't get sarcasm, facetiousness, uh, you know, satire. It's like dead right now. You couldn't even make it. It isn't, tire. Bob. It isn't. Exactly. It isn't. It's not dead. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you should play Al Gore. Someone told me that once, but I but don't want to play a guy. But you also have the fucking that... the way he would do that. Like, you remember they were like. Yeah, I don't want to play debate. a waffler. I don't want to be the waffler. I was just being Oh, comedic. my God. That would be the most fun thing to fucking play. Well, I don't see a sketch written about me playing Al Gore. In this great show, A Moral Compass, which is right now on Roku in the U.S., U.K., and Canada, and it's a comedy and a dark comedy, I'm not listed on here because I was not even in your thought process to play Al Gore, Bob, a waffling politician. Bob, I'm going to level with you. You weren't good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Do you watch Ted Lasso? That's a good show. Do you, Do watch you believe in love after love? I'm sorry, we got to pay for that. We have to cut that out. Um, uh, do you watch Ted Lasso? That would be a show I think you would like. Oh, Mickey, you're so fine. You're so fine. You blow my mind. I'm sorry, I'm we gonna... can't use that. That's a song. You I'm going to start doing than... that anytime you ask me a question I don't want to answer. Do I watch Ted Lasso? I have not yet. Hmm. How I'm can too busy. I be Wha sure in a world that's so constantly changing? Uh, what song is that? I don't know that. Da, 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 da. Yeah, where I stand with you. I don't know, I'm trying to think it's the animals, but it's not. Whenever I, it's an old ass song. Nobody old enough is listening. I thought that was this. from the 80s. No, that's an old, old song. Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking of your act. <laughs> um, I have a, I have this thing here that answers. Remember this thing? This is how I feel about you. Eat shit. Fuck you. That's a, that's a little thing I have that can do the work for me. I actually like that. I know. I wish I had one of those in my bedroom. When my wife starts talking, I would love to do that. You're an asshole. Fucking jerk. It's really good. <laughs> my God, I want one of those. Yeah. It's, I, would just, I was fine with eat shit. Fuck you. Just If I could do that one day, my wife was like, so what are your plans today? Because you know that. Fuck you. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's and that's all it says. It's five bullet points. And you know what would be the best? It's just waiting days and days and days, just waiting for the for the perfect setup. What are you doing today? <laughs> Eat shit. Fuck you. The only nightmare is you gotta keep new batteries in it. That's the important part because timing is everything. Oh my god. So I love that somebody came up with that and has a nice house. <laughs> I bet they I bet they do not have a nice house now. Why? Well, come on, Bob. You're so negative. Why can't You're they right. have that? They have a mansion with a credenza, all from inventing this. You're an asshole. <laughs> I mean, come on. And it's like a Philly accent, too. You're an asshole. It, it is. And it's got a high pitched voice, like a little guy with a weasley little nose. Fucking jerk, fucking jerk, eat shit. Fuck you. It, the eat shit, fuck you, does not need a stop. It does not need, it should go right after one another. It's kind of perfect. Oh, God. I want to have next time, you know, they give you notes on a script. <laughs> what do you think if this guy did this instead? Eat shit, fuck you. <laughs> but then okay. they can't say you're difficult because you didn't say it. <laughs> you pushed the button, but you're, you had nothing to do with it. Uh, you know, that's a great uh, you know, I talk about comedy, you know, to, to like is therapy is when you're in a writer's room and they come back with the network notes and then yeah. you just have one person read the notes. So they want us to do this. And then somebody just eat shit. Fuck you. And everyone can just <laughs> laugh and not think about all the work you have in front of you. It is weird that they'll come back with something that has nothing to do with the show you wanted to make. You know, I got to be honest with you. Uh, Netflix was fucking amazing. Netflix just said, uh, push it further. That was that, the one. That's note what I was going to. Maybe we they were just talking that. to you privately in the office. Oh, how can I be sure? Let me see you saying that because somebody knows. Let's just see. Uh, here it is. Here we go. It is um, the Rascals. And it's, uh, yeah, The Rascals, song by The Rascals. And uh, they were good, The Rascals. Remember them? No, but you're really making me miss Casey Kasem. He had, <laughs> he had so much more passion. Keep your legs in the air and your cock in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a question. That was we a got... good Casey Kasem. Well, I'm really good at those kind of felt things that were that like that announcer on Sesame. I'm good at the, you know, guys with microphones standing in front of things. Uh, question for you. Can you talk about this movie thing that's going to happen or do you want to keep it quiet? What your, movie thing that's going to happen? Your specific movie, Amnesia Man. You have a movie. <laughs> it's an <laughs> SNL character. Um, <laughs> that is a good idea for. Oh one. no, yeah, no, it's too early. You know, there's okay. so many things can happen between now and the end of this podcast. We'll have to see. That's true. In fact, I just got a. Oh my god, it's not happening. I just got a note. It's so weird. Um, no, wait a minute. No, it's going. It's going to be in deadline tonight. Ain't shit. Fuck you. <laughs> How's my movie doing? You're an asshole. <laughs> Fucking jerk. I also have a talking eight ball. You want to hear that? You want to ask? What is he saying? That after you're an asshole, fucking what? Eat shit. Fuck you. You're an asshole. Fucking jerk. Fucking jerk. Oh. I also have a talking eight ball that they never made, but they sent it to me for nothing. And here it is. And it says, Bob Saget's talking magic eight ball. So ask. I want to hear it. Ask it a question. Ask All a right. question. Is Bob Saget funny? <laughs> My answer is yes. It is definitely possible. And then he bangs oh. a gong. So it's definitely possible. Doesn't say yes. All yes, right. it okay. is definitely possible. Um, does, does Bill Burr um, prefer... Laying down to standing up. My answer is, it is too soon to tell. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. That's actually a good answer. That's, you don't know. Nobody knows. 
Nobody knows about whether you like Nobody this. knows the troubles I've seen. Now, so you can't sing that. That takes you back to a time. I am so sick of uh, people yelling out, I'm canceled during a, in the middle of a joke. Let me at least finish it and then cancel me. I mean, you know, let me get there. Bob, I, I, think, you, I think you're campaigning to be dangerous. Okay? You're America's uncle. Right? Is well, that what dad. you are? I'm America's dad. And, and I, I thought I you were uncle. Were well, you a dad on that show? Yeah. Uh, John Stamos was the uncle. Oh. When you oh, were a kid. That makes sense. Did you watch Full House as a kid? I'll be honest with you, Bob. I never saw an episode of it. That makes and I sense. I saw you guys all walking out there with your hair flying all over the place, looking like figure skaters. I was like, I am not watching this show. <laughs> You guys all look like you just got done doing a triple axle. I was like, yeah. I'm all set on this. I was jealous. I had like an afro. It just it just went out. When I met you, you had just the afro was coming down. You had about two inches of red frolicky hair and it was adorable. <laughs> frolicky. And you were and you were angry. You were you were uh, doing stand up and they were rude. And it was a life changing moment that we've talked about before. It was the thing that there's no real. It's when I was of. at the rascal. I was at Rascals. No, it was when you were at the Tweeter Center in Camden on the opening. I thought Anthony it was tour. when I was doing the, I was in the original cast of Jersey Boys. And when it went to Broadway, they, <laughs> they recast it. You were too tall. I was too orange. How many, <laughs> how many times did you see Jersey Boys? <laughs> I never saw that. But you know what? I was on a plane and I sat right next to Frankie Valley. Oh, I did too. Tell me about yours. Tell me your experience, because I, I love the guy. Well, I thought it was special. I mean, who the fuck says I sat next to Frankie Valley and the other guy says I did too? I just did. All right, well, let's hear your story. No, I want to hear yours. No, your, your Frankie Valley story first. I was amazed the shape the guy was in, and when the flight was over, he popped right up. Like, he had the energy of, like, a 25-year-old. Well, he's little. And he sits in a jack. He sits in those little boxes that you turn, and then he pops out when the flight lands. That's not what I felt. I felt like this guy is is an incredible star who's sixty years on the road and still popping up like that. Yeah, I mean, you know, you get up out of the chair like a fucking old linebacker, you know. Yeah, okay. Yeah, from doing walk. what, Bob? What have you? Yeah. You've, you haven't having to work for shit in this business. We all know it. No, I walk. For, I'm going to do Pilates in a few minutes. That's oh, a yeah? that's a Greek woman I'm seeing. I kind of like that joke. I was going to be a dick, but I like that joke. I was just going to wait. I just appreciate you not making fun of me talking about Frankie Valley popping out of those things you turned. That was the dumbest fucking thing I ever said. And you I just like quiet. that you brought up Greek women. Greek women are gorgeous. Yeah, they are. Have you been to Santorini with your wife? It's very sexy. Um, no, but you know what? I started to watch that new Gwyneth Paltrow sex, love and goop. I don't know what, what it was. I don't know what it is, dude. I, I put that on. I was just like, shut it off. Shut it off. Was it dirty? I mean, goop means I it, guess it would mean it, it was. I don't know what it was. It was like it was a bunch of fours and sixes trying to have tantric sex. And it, I, I think, I don't know what it was. I don't want to see me sexualized. <laughs> Are you saying? A f <laughs> it was, I don't even know what I was. I was so, it was really my issue. It was my issue. I put it on and it was so like, you know, this is your erogenous zones on your body. And I was like, ah, shut it off. Shut it. I was literally yelling, shut it off. So it's a documentary kind of thing. It's not a narrative. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't it's, know. I don't know it's what got it goop. is. Goop. Goop just sounds it like, like spoo. It was like a bunch of couples went to this fucking place and they were going to teach them how to fucking bust a nut without even being touched. Or I don't know oh, what yeah. it was. And yeah. it was just like, it was just, you know, regular people. You know, <laughs> you want tens. You don't want a four. But if you said a four. And a I don't six, want to see me being sexual. <laughs> no, I don't want to see you being sexual, even though this whole thing started with you lying down because you literally uh, have 
You are literally. It really uh, wasn't about how, how the people looked. I'm using that as a deflection. It was about, I don't know what it was. I, I, I recoiled when it came on. It was <laughs> like, I can't even describe it. I'm telling you, it's my issue that has nothing to do with Gwyneth or the people that are like, on the show. I mean, I'm really like proving the point of the show, which it's so fucked up that you can't even discuss. Uh, I, I don't know what it was. It was just, I don't know what it was, dude. I don't even know what it was. I just remember s- screaming, shut it off, shut it off. What network? Does, I never, I never it's on Netflix. It. Holy shit. And it I thought in- it was like a documentary because it says like, um, people go through sexual therapy with a therapist that sometimes involves intercourse. And I was like going like, what kind of fucking horse shit is this? Yeah. That somebody's giving you therapy and then they bang you? I mean, it sounds like, what the, what is this? So I thought it was like a documentary. I thought this was going to be like the Tiger King meets some creep. That's what I thought it was going to be. And instead it was a bunch of people just well beyond the age if you want to even know that they were sexually active, like my age, going into like a yoga studio is somebody like rubbed their hands together and held it above their junk. And they were like, going like, oh, 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 oh just going, shut it off. Shut it off. Did your wife want to watch it? My wife was dying laughing at my fucking reaction. <laughs> so I she love that she, she gets so, you. That's oh, like, yeah. She wouldn't shut it up. Right. We well, I mean, it actually had. It achieved what I wanted was I wanted to put on something and laugh with my wife. Like uh, we had a great laugh the other night. We watched this South Park episode about gentrification. Right. You I have to see, see it. I heard about oh, it. My, oh, Soto Sopa. You know, they always do like no ho and we ho. And they they just go into these areas. They kick out everybody else, bring in a bunch of fucking white people. And then they they rename like even, you know, like in, in um, New York, they did it. Hell's Kitchen became Clinton, you know, or whatever. And right. um, yeah, so this part of South Park, they call it Soto Sopa. So it's deliberately super long. I forget what it, it stands for. <laughs> and um, I will tell you one joke that they have. Because they build up this whole nice area around the, these poor people's house. And they have this gay bar right next to the garage. And it's called by the garage, B I. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They, you know, they found a form that I don't see people. There were people picketing them at one point, about ten years ago, but I don't see them getting shit. And they really bust a lot of doors. You just down. keep fucking shouting fire in a crowded movie theater. Why? Well, I'm talking about how brilliant those guys are. Now I'm you're saying trying that. Get, you're trying I'm to get saying, these hairy legged chicks all stirred up again. How dare you uh, criticize my comment? I was basically le- leading toward how brilliant they Can I are. Can ask you a question? What's behind that comment? My when comment? you say how dare I, like I just insulted your family crest. Uh, what, we, we have a duel? No, I'm not actually upset at you. I feel like how dare you? My is an, words is an and my outdated. inflection have nothing to do with how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like how dare you is an outdated expression. How double dare you? <laughs> I double dare you is, is, is a challenge, but how dare you? Yeah, yeah, because you were saying that I was saying that South Park was, uh, I was bringing up the negatives of people's reaction to it. I was saying, I was basically well, going to get to how brave. I was going to, if you'll let, you let me finish, remember our Terrence and Philip. may I finish? May I finish? Okay, I'm finished. You know, that was their, the, <laughs> I, I think that they are the most brilliant people that do this. I, I love, I can't wait to see that episode because I heard about it. You know what, Bob, they're not going to give you a voiceover so you can stop. Just no, they made fun of me in the show once. But I met Frankie Valley on a plane. So let me tell you my story, because you didn't want to hear the rest of it. Because um, you were too busy thinking that I was upset by what you said when I actually... I look up to you, Bill. I mean, I actually do. I mean, I don't think I would have... I, I wouldn't be able to even get through the day if I didn't think about what's Bill doing, what's Bill thinking. Ah, fuck. I'm keeping you alive. Pretty what much. can I do to be less inspirational? Maybe uh, sacrifice a body part. 
Okay. Well, let's, I'm, I'm open. What do you, what are we? I'd say every week a toe. Oh, this is an ongoing thing. I'd like to keep our friendship alive. <laughs> <laughs> I was next to Frankie Valley cause I used to open for Frankie Valley in the four seasons. But enough about how you made it in this business. No, I didn't get nothing. I made like a thousand bucks. I was playing in Pittsburgh and Jersey boys is based on the death of his, his daughter, uh, a very sad overdose. And that's what Jersey boys is about. That's the linchpin of the movie. I was opening for them. The they night. made a musical about the, somebody losing that's their the daughter. Dramatic, sad part of the, the, the movie uh. and the play. And I was there that night. I was physically there the night that it happened. And I was able to talk to Frankie because I just lost a sister. And I, yes, I made jokes about it, not with Frankie, but with other people at that time because I didn't know how to deal with it. And he was, he never forgot it that I, uh, that I gave a shit and didn't fuck up by bothering him. But literally before he went through the curtain, doing a show right, like, eight hours after he found out. And that is like, may us never know about that. That's uh, that's just the worst. And when I saw him on the plane- You just have an incredible ability to make everybody's stories about yourself. Yeah, that's the key to why I'm not- Are you in wrestling? Because your two-point reversals conversationally are incredible. Would you say this to Muhammad Ali as well? What does that have to do? Are you saying you're the greatest? <laughs> when I when I said the first part, I knew you were going to say that. This is a big mistake. This whole thing. Uh, I'm not cutting it out because all I'm doing is digging holes and you're covering them with dirt. But I'm saying that uh, it's not about myself. I'm saying uh, that I was there for a historic moment with Frankie. Because you said, let me hear your story first. That's all I was doing, was telling you. It was kind of a poignant story. I'm sorry. Bob, what are you talking about right now? What have you been talking about this entire podcast? Pretty much about your show. Uh, that's how I did it. <laughs> your show, Immoral Compass, which is on Roku Channel in US, UK, and Canada. And how much I love your stand-up. And you're going to be touring everywhere, literally everywhere. And you're sold out. Is there somebody talking in your ear? I just love when you do that. Yeah, I'm talking. We're going to go live to Bob Saget's garage. Actually, Frankie this Valley. This is where he cries in his I've house. Got, I've got Frankie Valley. He doesn't think I said anything inappropriate. In fact, he liked that I recognized that he did the show after his horrible loss. Bill, I lost you again. You're getting calls. Who, who, who would be calling you that you'd want to talk to? Uh, my therapist. Do you have a therapist? Yeah, Bob, I'm friends with you. <laughs> I'm going to need to call mine after I this. was fine. I was fine until I met you. <laughs> Big Bob Saget. <laughs> oh, look at me. Look at me and my credenza. <laughs> oh, yeah, Frankie Valley. Yeah, we opened with the, yeah. I was, I was there the biggest night of his tragedy. <laughs> and he took time out of crying to thank me, to let me know what a great person I was. And then you give the appendage. And then he went out and did a show. It was amazing to see. It was all about you. That's true. When you wake up, when, you, when you're in the shower, do you sing, all of me? Why not listen to all of me? I don't sing in the it's shower. It's about fucking Any... me and not you. I got a question for you. Hey, Bob, can you tell me what you did on 9-11? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I cried. <clears throat> Why, did you have a gig down in uh, the financial district that then had to be rescheduled? I had a gig in the windows of the world. Oh, Bobby. What do you want me to do? I mean, you were trying to... Hey, I Eric? liked it, Bob. I liked it. You, you uh, were actually I, I, giving I'll, these people I have to, it's I an have authentic to. of what comics do when we fucking hang out with each other. Right, this but I think I got to take out three things. One is how self-involved it sounds to you and maybe to the people of the Frankie Valley story. And Bobby, Bob, I acted like I didn't remember the Holocaust. Oh, yeah, you did. 
I did, yeah. Yeah, but you can do no wrong, Bill. I'm a sensitive guy that doesn't sing in the fucking shower. All of me. I don't sing Everything in the shower. Everything is about Bobby. What when about you? Wait, wait a second. Hold on a second. Hold your horse. Oh, he's got his fire up. Here we go. My Monday morning podcast happens also on Thursdays. You didn't bother to go Thursday morning podcast. And what the fuck do you talk about the whole time? Your perception of how you see the world. That's Bob, about. can I ask you a question? Yeah. Doesn't it suck having to get guests? Well, this That's a one, loaded question. That's a loaded one, question. Just this one. Uh, no, first thing, you're one of my favorite people that I know. You never look at me when you say that. You're one of the look favorite down. People. Bill, you're one I of my I respect fa- your talents Bill. and, uh, you know, I feel Bill, like you're, honestly, uh, I, you're one, shit. you're one of my favorite people that I've ever <laughs> known in my <laughs> life. But, uh, no, I actually, uh, I actually love you. Um, and. Well, Bob, you're moving too fast for me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I'm having a dead. It is so. <laughs> it is so. Yes, it, it is, is so. Going too fast. Right. So the the answer is uh, uh uh I don't know what the question is. It is hard to get guests, but I've been on the what I've been doing now is just letting it happen organically. It just feels like oh, I just talk to this person, and it feels nice. So I kind of have been. I guess, following the organicness of that. I haven't been going, oh, God, I hope I... If I don't hear from somebody, that means they're not doing it. <laughs> you know, if I say, hey, could you reach out to their people? And then someone says, hey, would you like to have this person? And I go, well, th- maybe, but not right now, you know, because I don't like to say no to people. But I also want the podcast to be really, really strong um, and make... There's so many options out there. I mean, I would just listen to you. I mean, I don't know who else... I mean, there's so many. Bob, you're spiraling. That's what you said at the beginning. You just started like, I don't know, you started talking and then I felt like, you know, I was listening to you and I think somewhere in there you started panicking and you just started going and going and going. No, I I did. I answered the question organically and then I thought of the other part of it where you have to go after people. Bob, how many more knickknacks do you need to buy to fill the void? (laughs) Actually, it's funny. I I moved over... uh, to ATC, which is a disease and it's not curable. But um, but uh, a wonderful guy named Russell said, you need more stuff behind you. Get more of your stuff. And I thought, that's going to look like a garage sale. <laughs> you know, all no. things are fine. Bob, we are thrilled to have you over at All Things Comedy. All right, you're a legend. You know, you got your start on Gunsmoke. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I really enjoyed you in the original Hawaii Five O. Yeah, I mean, I've just been following your career. You know, I, when you I were was standing in the black co- and white, saluting the casket as it rolled by. <laughs> I've just been I've been watching you for so long, and just to see that you're so still so young and vibrant. Did and you know you, that I was? Like, the- what do you do, Bob, to wake up and still hold on to that excitement? Well, usually I let my penis do the walking for me it it tells me how my day is going to be it's kind of like a sundial or a rudder are you over your relationship with nancy sinatra no i know when she dropped you in 68 that was a hard thing she was at the top of the charts she didn't leave me so quick because i have her boots i kept them what is it true she wrote that song about you yeah yeah the boots were made for walking and yeah that's about me she said one day to me, you sit, keep saying, you've got something for me. Uh-huh. And and then that was it. And then she wanted to walk out, but I had her boots. I was wearing them. We had the same size feet. <laughs> but who's, what's, who's the strangest person that you dated before um, you wound up with your beautiful wife? I, you know what? I actually dated great women, to be honest with you. All of them? Yeah. So none of them will come out and say anything bad about you? Is that why you did that? No, I mean, I hooked up with some psychos, but I never dated a psycho. Never? No, I mean, once I found out they were crazy, I was just like shoving off the buffalo. I just got out of it. (laughs) (laughs) 
Like, why would you keep dating somebody that's fucking crazy? I mean, the first time they're like, that was my up. mistake. That's the you, difference. You, I did you, that. Uh, it's all about Bob. No, I made a mistake. Let's bring it back to Bob. No, it's called a conversation. You got Bill. things to Bill, say. It's called a conversation. Really? You should have been a terror terrorist. A, a terror hijack every fucking conversation. <laughs> oh, my God. That is a good joke. That's not a bad joke. No, it's a good joke. I got a teeth clean. Look at that. That's nice and white. That's really nice. Show me how how you... Did you have your butthole cleaned out too? I had it bleached. I said I wanted to match my teeth. (laughs) (laughs) Bob, I have to go. I have something at noon. I uh, also uh, actually have to go. Uh, But I... All right, you want to edit that out? You You want to be the guy that has to go so you can feel better about yourself? No, I think the more berating of me, the better this thing's going to be for your fans. <laughs> Bob, Bill, they're going to see the I, love. I, I love Bob, you. Every time I see a homeless guy crying in a parking garage, <laughs> I picture you in your house. <laughs> Shit, fuck you, fuck you. Uh, I love that thing. I want to smoke a cigar, so we'll figure out. Let's do that. Yes, so you, we'll look at each other's things, and then we'll look at our schedules. All right. Hey, best of luck with this show. Everybody should watch this Immoral Compass. Immoral Compass. Tyler Falbo, uh, guest starring, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, Vince Vaughn, Bobby Lee, Al Madrigal, Nick myself, and Nick You're Schwartzen. in the damn thing. Yeah. And it's going to be, of course, it is on the Roku channel. Mary Lynn Rice Cobb. Marilyn Ruskab, I adore U.S., U.K., and Canada, and other countries as it becomes the biggest thing that's ever been anywhere. And the finale of uh, Epis for Family, this is the season to enjoy. And Bill on tour everywhere. And you can find him at bobsaget.com. You can see Bill's tour. Uh, Bill, I love you, and I will smoke with you soon. All right. Love you too, brother. We'll see you. All right, man. (laughs) Bye-bye. I don't know what to do. Do I edit? I said things that he's right about. That's why he's brilliant. I love Bill Burr. I feel bad about everything I said. Um, not everything, but uh, it is a problem I had my whole life of uh, turning things back to me. Uh, he called it out. I own it. I think it's insecurity. Uh, and uh, I guess I'll work on it. I'm 65, <clears throat> losing my voice, nothing to worry about. Um, God damn, I love Bill Burr. I just adore this man. And um, he's just one of my favorite people. So get him on tour. You want to see his stand-up. It is, uh, he, he does things and the way he works. And he's got a giant damn heart and a really good man. I don't mean oversized. I don't mean he's in danger. Uh, cigars are okay for him. And uh, I love him. So go to BillBurr.com. Uh you know where to catch him. And watch this thing. He really wants everybody to see it. Immoral Compass on the Roku channel, US, UK, and Canada. And um, it's out now, out right now. And uh, catch him on tour. And he's he's got a bunch of stuff coming up. Just always follow. Look at him in The Mandalorian. He always talks about it. Not at all. Um, but um, I love Bill Burr. And I don't give a shit who knows it. That's almost a quote from Norman Lear. Oh, I name dropped. Damn, I need to call my therapist. Guys, thanks for um, listening. I'm really happy to be over here at uh, All Things Comedy, and I look forward to the next episode a whole lot. And I want to thank my friend Bill Burr. I want to, but I can't because my feelings are hurt. But how can your feelings be hurt if the truth is spoken? That's what's so fucking awesome. Guy is so lucid and speaks the truth. And... (laughs) And I'll get through the day. Uh, You know what to do. Get it wherever you get your podcasts. It's everywhere. Look at the thing. It's got the thing. Go to bobsaget.com. I'm on tour. I'll be doing a special. I don't know when, but I will be doing it. And it will be, I think, my favorite one because I'm talking about things in a way that I haven't. Uh, Unlike how Bill dignified my my self-absorption. Although I guess that's what... A lot of stand-ups are. Anyway, uh, Monday Morning Podcast. It doesn't need promotion. It's one of the number one podcasts that exists with good reason. The man is 
It's just fucking brilliant. And uh, I love him. Thanks, Bill Burr. Thanks uh, for you guys for listening. I hope this brought you some joy hearing me <laughs> tortured. I knew this was going to happen because I was not at my best last night. I was, uh, I was ornery. I was ornery and a little selfish. So uh, this was a, a due punishment that I deserved. So next time I have Bill on, it'll be different. I don't know what it'll be. I might have a new credenza. I don't know. If you're watching on YouTube, tell me what the fuck this thing is behind me. I don't know. It's uh, YouTube, uh, you know, dot com slash Bob Saget. And then see me out on tour. I'd love to have you laughing. It's really great to see people laughing again and hear them. Hearing them and seeing them and smelling them, which means I don't need to take a test that day. Uh, I'm wishing you the best. Take it easy, everybody. Mm